Well, welcome to day five of these Advent devotions from St. Thomas Church, Swansea. I wonder how many times in your life have you had to really dig deep and persevere? I'm told that Steve, our vicar, um, has done, I think, at least two marathons and several Ironman um, type uh, events. So he knows all about this. Um, for me, well, I, I did try and run the marathon once. I, I, I trained, I think, at the, at the age of 17. I started training for the marathon, um, but I put my application in. Um, it got rejected. And when it got rejected, I stopped training for the marathon and I never ran it. So I think I had to think of other things. And um, the, probably the one that came to mind was when I was uh, 16 um, and I was in the army cadets and um, I had the privilege of going on a summer camp with the parachute regiment up in Northumbria um, and I said what those guys were absolute titans I remember there was a, a PT instructor called Bombardier Bluck who had who could do 2,000 press-ups in one go and so they absolutely pushed us um, to our limits. And I remember one time we were doing this really, really arduous um, uh, early morning run. And basically the, um, th there was an army lorry coming behind you. And if it caught up with you, then you had to get in, in, in the lorry. You were, you were taken out of the race. You didn't get to the end. And so I was absolutely desperate to make it to the end. And I just managed it just through the finish line, just before the army lorry um, got there. I was one of the six who made it. So I was, I was very proud of that moment. But 2020 has been a year for perseverance, hasn't it? And in fact, the Bible has a lot to say about how to persevere as people who are waiting in hope. Now, the song that accompanies today's devotion is O Church Arise by Stuart Townend and Keith Getty. And the Bible passage is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, which say this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, those are the people who have persevered before us. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And of course, in times like this, that is the temptation, isn't it? To grow weary and to lose heart. But these, uh, these verses have some key lessons um, to take to heart if we want to be people who don't grow weary and and lose heart and give up. And the first one is this, choose the right things to reject. Choose the right things to reject. Verse one says, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. Now there's lots to say on this, but um, I, I think often it's, it's attitudes that we need to throw off. Big temptations, isn't it, to, um, to give way to apathy or to bitterness or to take um, refuge in, in, in false refuges, like, like alcohol, drowning our sorrows. Or to, to be caught up in self-absorption and just be like, I don't care about anyone else. Uh, it, 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 we, we can t easily turn inwards in frustrating times like this. Or simply to give up. But that reminded me, that temptation reminded me of um, a great quote from uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, if you remember it, when Samwise Gamgee says this. He says, it's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end because how could the end be happy? But those were the stories that stayed with you, that meant something. Folk in those stories had lots of chances of turning back, only they didn't. They kept going because they were holding on to something, that there is some good in this world and it's worth fighting for. And I think that quote touches us in, deep, in a deep place, doesn't it? Because we know in the end, we don't want to be a quitter. We want to be one of those people who persevered to the end. And so we need to throw off any of those, those negative attitudes um, that, would, uh, that, that would stop us from persevering. And actually, it can be very helpful to actually declare that out loud. For example, to say, I'm not giving up. Lord, I'm not giving up. Or I'm not giving into bitterness. Lord, help me not to. 
uh, to give in to bitterness and, and, uh, and any of those, those other things. Okay, um, second tip, choose to run with perseverance. Choose to run with perseverance. Now, in th this year, there are loads of different groups of people that my heart is really going out to. And one of them are, are the athletes. Remember, th 2020 was supposed to be an Olympic year, wasn't it? And yet those poor athletes who had been training so, so hard um, have had the Olympics put off for another year. They were trying to peak at just the right time in 2020. But, um, but now it's been delayed to 2021. And I, I, and I guess those athletes had a choice, didn't they? They could either just, just sort of... Uh, just just get completely fed up and sit down and stop training or they could keep running those laps keep training um, for the olympics now in 2021 and it's the same for us we need to keep running those laps to keep on with those disciplines of body mind and spirit um, that keep us going, that keep us strong, that keep us serving, keep us having an impact for God in this world. And there's all sorts of disciplines. Um, uh, one of them is, is fitness that keeps our body healthy and, and, the, and the body and the mind and the spirit, they are all um, in, integrally connected. Disciplines of thankfulness, disciplines of encouraging others on a regular basis, disciplines of daily Bible reading and prayer. Disciplines of meeting um, with other believers, even if that means um, uh, going on Zoom for one, one more time. But keeping up that discipline because we're committed um, to our brothers and sisters and to their well-being. Disciplines of rest. Disciplines of fun and, and, and regular fun, laughter, cheering other people up, uh, make it, making them laugh. That, that, that's actually a discipline. And, it, and again, it's one of those things that helps people going. And we're going to say a, a bit more about, about some of those disciplines in future devotions. But choose to run the race, to keep up those, those disciplines, uh, keep running those laps. And then finally, choose the ultimate inspiration. Choose the ultimate inspiration. Verse 2 says, do all these things while fixing your eyes on Jesus. Jesus, who persevered through far greater suffering than any of us will ever endure. And he persevered, it says, because he knew the joy set before him, the joy of being restored to, to, to his father's presence again. But also knowing that that joy he would then, after the cross, he would be able to share uh, with us and with any who uh, put their hope in him. Choose the ultimate inspiration. And just a final tip um, with all of this is I'd really recommend um, enlisting a few spiritual training partners. A few other people who, who want to have this same outlook and to keep up the same disciplines as you do. Because just like training for a marathon, it's much easier if you have a few other people who you're doing it with, who are spurring you on all the way. But if you're waiting in hope, well, don't grow, don't give up, don't grow despondent. There is purpose in the perseverance. Keep running those laps. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that there is purpose in the perseverance. Father, thank you that your word um, teaches us in so many ways how to persevere and how to make the most of even seasons like this. So Lord, would you help us to keep running those laps, to keep running with perseverance and to keep our eyes on the ultimate inspiration, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.